We welcome now Andrew Tominello with Hollowell PA and Trial Lawyers for Justice. Hey, Andrew. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. So tell us about this situation in Water Valley. I'm not sure if I can actually pronounce the name of the chemical. I'm not trying to laugh about that. I'm laughing about my inability to sometimes to pronounce some of these these technical uh, names. But TCE trichloroethylene. I can't say it. Say it for me. You got close. You got close. Trichloroethylene. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I think I stuck another P in there. Gotcha. TCE is uh, mm-hmm. kind of the short name used to describe this chemical. So the, the uh, I guess it's not an allegation anymore. It's We have fact to support the fact, right, that this uh, was dumped into the water supply in the Water Valley area. And this has been done over decades, starting a long time ago. Tell us about this. Well, first off, I mean, I want to be really clear about this. The dumping, you know, happened from 72. They, were, they weren't using TC at the factory between 72 and 83 or so, about a 10, 10 or 11 year period, right? And then um, it became so difficult to use regulation-wise, EPA regulations and everything, that um, I, they switched to another solvent, right? Um, the problem is, is that TCE at that point had been dumped all over uh, the factory premises. Uh, and in fact, you know, we're not talking about like uh, pure phase or new you're talking about the waste TC. You're using it, they're using it to clean automotive parts. That's what they were making at the factory in Water Valley. Um, it was Holly Carburetor. They were making carburetors. Uh, okay. They would use yeah, Holly TC Carburetors. I, rem- I remember that when I was a youngster. Everybody wanted a Holly Carburetor to, to jazz up their, their vehicles, right? Had the big four barrels. You hit, you hit the gas pedal one time and a gallon's gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's probably right. Um, but, yeah, so that's what they were making. You know, the problem is, is just that, it's expensive to get rid of TC, right? Waste TC. You've got to hand okay. out a uh, license exposure. And, and, you know, basically, based on records that they submitted to the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality, <clears throat> they had purchased about 80,000 gallons of TC and had only responsibly disposed of about 6,000. You know, you can see okay. that's less than 10%, right? So where did it go? Well, it went into the ditches, it went into the land. Uh, they found out that waste TC would kill weeds. They started giving it to employees to spray in their own yards, gave it to the county spray on the roads um Hmm. but yeah so you know just as you phrase it i just want to be clear though um that there was no tc used after 83 84 okay long time ago and obviously it it doesn't easily break down and yeah i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you it 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 Mm -hmm. obviously doesn't break down and dissolve uh into a a a uh, non-harmful or non-carcinogenic substance it it stays in that form in that state is that right for a very long time and that's what causes problems well so you know it's kind of a dual-edged sword right it gets into the ground it can contaminate the water it'll come back up and at that point when it starts coming back up it will find its way in a vapor form through the cracks in your foundation or if you've got a conventional foundation to straight house right wow so that's wow. what really comes they call that vapor intrusion um, and that's what huh. I believe a lot of folks have had to be dealing with um, out there. And in fact, you know, that's why the levels of TCE in the factory, the air, indoor air, are still so high because it's so much under the ground there that they had to install. Wow. Um, yeah, air, air filter to try to get that out of there. So people are still, you know, we're still getting exposed. So this is uh, thought to, uh, to cause cancer. And so are there some organizations that are experts on those matters that ha- have absolutely determined that? Well, you know, this isn't the type of case that I normally take, right? Uh, we were contacted, my partner and I, Boo Hollowell, or George Hollowell, um, okay. were contacted by a couple of nurses at the hospital there, and they were telling us, you know, hey, we just recently got diagnosed with cancer, and a bunch of people in the area have been getting diagnosed with cancer for the past decade or so, you know. Um, would y'all come talk to us? And so we went and talked to him on a Saturday and uh, come to find out, you know, this is something that's been going on for, you know, these cancers and these crazy types of incidents, you know, conditions that they're having, decades. Um, what we're using basically is CDC data on what they have found to be definitively linked, you know, types of cancers that should, you know, definitively link to TC exposure. So any, any we've hired particular... Experts. Any particular okay. forms of cancer or just any kind? 
So one of the more prevalent ones that you would see with TC exposure is uh, kidney cancers and liver cancers, right? Kidney okay. cancer is a strange cancer. Um, yes. And when you think, it, look, as a lawyer, I've got to learn the science of my case. And, and, you know, as soon as I'm done with it, a lot of times I forget it. But I'm up on this science right now. And I can tell you that the kidney cancer um, is unique because of the way TC breaks down in the body, right? It, once you get it, once it filters through your system, and it gets to your kidneys, the last you know little filtration uh, area. It forms a hard salt, a hard salt, right? Like so, think about a um, ten times harder kidney stone. You can't break them down; they just stay there. Gotcha. They ultimately can turn into cancers. So, gotcha. So, uh, tell us about the lawsuit. Is this a class action suit uh, against Holly? Is that are they still the owners of the building? Still around as a company? Is there still a a defendant, I guess, with assets? So there are. Um, there are defendants. So, you know, if you really get into the corporate aspect of this, um, Holly Automotive was ultimately bought by Colt Firearms. They called themselves Colt Tech um, at okay. that time. And then Colt Tech sold to Enpro, and Enpro is our defendant. They maintain the liabilities. They sold that factory a couple times. Borg Warner owned it, you know, uh, but, but Borg Warner didn't buy the liability. Uh, and pro kept those liabilities. So they're uh, uh, our main defendant. We've also sued the chemical manufacturer, and both of them are, you know, multi-billion dollar companies. So, Wow. So is the factory still operational, or is it just shut down? It is. No, you know, and they don't use TC anymore. They still make auto parts. Um, I'm under the impression, it's, I think it's Solera. Um, okay. I was under the impression that they made, you know, carts for, uh, parts for EV vehicles, but, you know, I'm not positive about that. So are people yep. in the area, are they still at risk, Andrew? Are they? I mean, because it, I don't know if this stuff is broken down to this point where it's harmless, or but people living in the Water Valley area still have problems? So, you know, if you live in the city of Water Valley, you don't have any problems. If you're getting your water from the city, you don't have a problem, right? If okay. you're one of the wells that's contaminated, and there's a 340-acre plume of TCE emanating from the facility, right? Uh, basically wow. towards the, uh, the city, yeah. Uh, it just hasn't, you know, the, the city water has been fine the whole time. In fact, when, when the company found out they polluted the well back in the late 80s, early 90s, they got on city water. So, Okay. Is there is there a, a, a process to treat the chemical to, to render it harmless? Mm -hmm. So, you know, they had to submit a work plan to the uh, Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality back in the early 2000s, I want to say. Again, I'm, I don't have everything in front of me, and there's a lot of facts in this case, but, you know, early yeah. 2000s, where they, they, what they're doing is essentially they set up three pumps um, around the perimeter of the northern edge of the plume, and then another vacuum essentially pump towards the back south side of the plume. And what they're doing is they're okay. pushing air through the ground, through the underground, to that pump to kind of try to pull it out, right? I got the, the problem you. in North Mississippi, particularly like Yalabusha County, Lafayette County, which I'm more familiar with, but um, they got red clay. And it sticks sure. to red clay. It's, it's okay. difficult. So, but that's the yeah, process. I mean, I mean, they're you know. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say you drive around the area, you see the red clay exposed all over the place. I mean, that's that's just the formation uh, of that part of the state, and so that's n n not as good a situation with respect to uh, the the underlying dirt, if you will, under our feet for this issue, for this chemical. It's almost a perfect storm. Yeah. Almost a perfect man, story. man. So, so, well, but what's what's you know as what's far next as in the case? Goes, yep. So you know we're still like I was in Water Valley um, after some of the the articles had come out. Um, we were getting calls again. You know we had signed up roughly eight hundred folks, a little over eight hundred folks before we filed the lawsuit. Um, wow. You know, not everybody has a cancer or or a condition, but they were exposed, and sure. you know, frankly, um, they need to have ongoing monitoring so that they can get ahead of any you know, cancers or other conditions as soon as possible. Sure. Right? Cancer is more treatable nowadays than it used to be. It's all about sure. catching it early. So you were going to say, as far yes. as the people goes, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What were you going to say there? Mm. No, you're, you're okay. Um, I was in Water Valley interviewing the new people that had called in. Um, but, yeah, we've got roughly 900 um, at this point. Um, people, you know, they've been calling or getting in touch with us various ways. So, um, you know, it's not a class action they're all kind of really local. Um, so we're just filing individual, or, or, you know, a big suit with everybody in it, essentially. We've got okay. one suit that we filed recently, nine, and then we've got the upcoming one. 
Andrew, before we go, we're about out of time here. If if folks want to join in the suit, how should they handle that? Yeah, so they can call our office, Hollowell Law Firm. The number is 662-378-3103. Appreciate that. Andrew, appreciate uh, you coming on and, and enlightening on this story. We'll be tracking it as well. Thank you so much.